we're back and just in time to start discussing section 8 or part 8 which is partial derivative oh it looks like the frequency was too high we went forward in time too much we need to go back in time yeah that's better in section 7 we had a look at functions of more than one variable functions that depend on x and y where x and y are variables. In this case, y is not a function of x. And we've seen that we can have a look at them as surfaces in three dimensions in the z-axis. We've also seen that some of those surfaces, for example, the time-traveling ukulele, this one, we can have a look at it. And for some reason, maybe we want to study how the surface is varying along different directions. Take, for example, this part of the ukulele, if we're traveling or moving along this direction, we can see that the surface is rising. We'll see that this means that the partial derivative is actually positive. But if we, but if we take another direction, say this, regardless of where we are, there is actually no slope. There is no change. This would mean that within the surface, the magical ukulele, then the partial derivative is going to be zero along this direction. The important question now is not how we do it with the ukulele, but how do we do it with any surface? How do we calculate these partial derivatives or derivatives when we fix one direction and just go along the other? Or in other words, the derivatives when we, for example, fix y and look at the variations of x or fix x and look at variations of y. The best way to do that is first get rid of the ukulele and then think of a specific example, like the one you have on your lecture notes in section 8. In this case, and with what we know, let's say that we wanted to calculate the derivative of z in respect to x. With the notation that we've used, this is what we would be writing. And in a way, we should be applying d dx to the expression, which is 2x squared y to the power of 3. In this case, because we've said it very explicitly, y is not a function of x, you should definitely not be differentiating this like an implicit function. It is not. What is happening here is this is a function of x and y. You're differentiating in respect to x, which implies that anything that is not an x is a constant. And therefore, differentiating this is just getting 4x y to the power of 3. The problem here is that this notation is not very clear. We use it whenever we have functions of just one variable. And in this case, this is when we use y. But this becomes inappropriate when we look at functions of more than one variable. So we're gonna get rid of it. Instead, when we have a function of more than one variable, we're actually calculating a partial derivative. We're differentiating only when we're changing one variable and we're keeping anything else fixed, we're going to use the curved d. And in this case, we would be calculating dz dx. And this is the same as applying the d dx operator that is now partial operator, because the function depends on more than just one variable of 2x squared y to the power of 3 and whenever we have this it is explicit that these things will be variables you're just partially differentiating so we're keeping everything else constant and we end up having 4x y to the power of 3. If instead we want to differentiate z in respect to y it implies that we are now keeping x fixed. This is the same as applying the d dy operator to the function 2x squared y to the power of 3. And in this case, once we apply it, x is a constant, 2 is a constant, we're only differentiating y, and this becomes 6x squared y to the power of 2. And we would say that these are the two partial derivatives of function z, which is a function of x and y. And these are the basics for partial differentiation. 